the sad part about this is Auburn has the potential to be a good football team, but unfortunately, they have a washed up head coach and terrible quarterback play. The definition of insane is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. By trotting out Peyton Thorne on that field every Saturday, that's what you're doing. We aren't talented enough yet to play bad and win. We're not talented enough to play bad and win. My brother in Christ, are you kidding me? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you are having a great start to your week. Hope all of you are having a great Tuesday. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. We got some very interesting and controversial things to talk about in today's video that includes Auburn football. Hugh Freeze and his quarterback Peyton Thorne, they're in a sticky mess. We're going to talk all about that. One of our other topics is, I guess this is America's team at this point, Northern Illinois. To go along with that, Mike Gundy, he has recently said something that caught my attention. This is the best time of the year. We are in the midst of college football season, which means we got a jam-packed video. Strap in, buckle up, get you a snack, get you a popcorn, get your favorite meal you like to eat when you watch a video, because trust me, I do the same thing, but all right, Matt, blah, 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 shut the crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, on one of yesterday's videos, somebody left this comment. This is from Rhett. Mueller, hope I'm saying that correctly. I was walking in my city and Matt tried to tie my shoelaces. Luckily, I had a big bag of Fent and he took it and ran. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. That was you? That's crazy. I thought it was red, but I couldn't tell. I got distracted. This comment has 16 replies. I'm kind of scared to look at these replies, but I guess we got to do it. Let's dive into it. Dude, what? So random, but something Matt will do. I sure hope he reads this one. What do you mean that's something Matt will do? Matt is on a satellite surveillance video running. He's easy to follow. His head is so... All right, dude. Really? Hashtag Matt be bald at the end? I didn't even see that. <laughs> what? I saw it and have it on video? I saw him at Buggies in Athens. Half the fin was gone, but he had beaver nuggets. You know what's crazy? I actually go to that Bucky's if you know what I'm talking about. It's in Northern Alabama. Now, this one actually pisses me off. What do you mean that definitely sounds like him? Matt B. Drizzy hosted one heck of a rager last week. Then you got a bunch of people saying I'm pulling up to the Matt B. Diddy party slash function. I feel bad for the new viewers that come to the channel because they have no idea what they're walking into. Imagine you discover a new YouTube channel and you're like, hey, these videos are all right. I might subscribe. Then you go to the comment section and see a comment like this. I wish I could read off more of these comments, but we kind I need to talk about football, so let's get into it. The first topic I have on the agenda for you guys today is Northern Illinois. I'm not here to talk about the game. We saw it and we've talked plenty about it. But it was something I saw on Twitter and I was like, you know what? This is 100% right. This was the post-game speech from Northern Illinois' head coach. Listen, what you can do with the power of belief and working together and, and just staying through it, through thick and thin, that's what we are. That's a team. That's a family. That's guys that want it. I told you all week, we did not need luck. We did not need luck. I know it's real easy to say, oh yeah, I love this head coach, but I really do. I love his philosophy. I mean, he's always holding his players accountable and he's 100% right. It wasn't luck. And I could talk more about that, but someone quote tweeted the video and said, to me, the difference between the NFL and college football is every single week some team is playing a game they'll remember the rest of their lives. I can't tell y'all enough how great of a comment that is. That is the difference. In college football, it just means more. That's like the SEC slogan, right? But for the entirety of college football, it means more. It's not just Northern Illinois. There's going to be a couple other teams this year that upset some program in which they were 30-point underdogs, and they're going to remember that until the day they die. In the NFL, you don't get that just due to the fact these guys are making millions and millions of dollars, and if they lose and if they win, it's not that big of a deal because at the end of the day, they've already beat the game of life. But for these college kids, the game just means a little bit more, at least in my humble opinion. Not to discredit the NFL guys, I enjoy watching the NFL, but I think you get the point I'm trying to get across. I would love to talk more about that, but we got to get to move on to our second topic before we get into the Auburn topic, and we're only going to talk about this for about 45 seconds. I just thought this was rather fascinating. So Oklahoma State, they had one of their backup linebackers come in in the game against Arkansas. Not too big of a deal, but it was what Mike Gundy had to say after the game. Quote, unquote, do you want me to go back into coach talk or do you want the truth? He was very inexpensive, referring to the backup. The number of players that we go after that were ready to play at this level, 
we can't afford. In other terms stating, the backup linebacker was a good bang for your buck. This quote was taken a little bit out of context, but the principle stands, he still said these words. And what inclined me to even talk about this in today's video is how much college football has shifted. You now have college coaches going, okay, we can spend this amount of money for a quarterback before backup linebacker. Ah, uh, do we really want to spend a million dollars? Probably not. I'd say a backup linebacker in the portal is worth what? I don't know. $30,000? I have no idea what the market is. It also depends what team it is because Oklahoma State obviously doesn't have as big as a budget as Ohio State. The Ohio State budget's like $100 billion. Oklahoma State's ain't even close to that. Just interesting times in college football. I don't think too much of this quote at all. It's just fascinating to have an inside look at what goes on behind the scenes and you gotta give credit to Mike Gundy. He's always gonna shoot you straight. And that's why I like Mike Gundy, because say what you want, he always tells the truth. This is the same head coach who went his running back, star running back, Ollie Gordon, got arrested for what was it? Oh yeah, a DUI. He came out and stated, hey man, we've all been there before. Getting that out the way, let's get into the main topic, the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video. What in the world is going on in Auburn, Alabama? Short answer is, it's a crap show, but let's divulge into that a little bit more. Let me give you some context and catch you up to speed. Last year was not only Peyton Thorne's first year at Auburn, but it was Hugh Freeze's first year at Auburn. Nobody was going to criticize Peyton Thorne and Hugh Freeze too much just due to the fact, like I said, it was their first season. Well, now it's year two. There's no more excuses. The Auburn fan base, they're ready to win, and they're ready to win right now. You can't say, oh, well, Peyton Thorne's not comfortable. He's already been there. Same thing for Hugh Freeze, and... One of the main excuses people tried to throw out there for Peyton Thorne last year was he didn't have elite wide receivers, but now he does. You got Cam Coleman, and there's a couple others that are really standouts, in my humble opinion. In week one, Peyton Thorne, Auburn, they take care of business. They put a cupcake. Who cares? Well, in week two, they hosted a West Coast football team, with all due respect, in California, and lost. This was a game that I'd say a majority of Auburn fans expected to win. Sure, California is a solid ball club, and matter of fact, I think they're much better than what people get credit for, but different conversation for a different day. Point is, Auburn fans, like I said, expected to win. You are in the SEC and you're playing California. This is almost like a must win. What happened in this ball game? Well, Auburn's defense was fine. They kept him in it, but Peyton Thorne, he was atrocious. He threw not one, not two, not three, count them, four INTs, and it should have been about five or six. And it's not even just the interceptions that concern me. It was him missing wide open wide receivers numerous times. To go on top of that, he was making terrible reads and he just didn't look even average out there. He looked bad. That was one of the worst performances I've seen out of an Auburn quarterback in quite some time. And I've seen bad Auburn quarterbacks. Let me show you this. And major shout out to Aaron Murray. He did this in a film breakdown. And he is spot on the money. This is one play where I can't tell it's so zoomed out. But you see this wide receiver on the right. I'm going to circle him for you. He's on a crossing route. The other two wide receivers on the left, they're going up, and they're going to clear the way. This crossing route is wide open. But, and I have a big but, unfortunately for Auburn fans, Peyton Thorne's your quarterback. He should have thrown this ball when this wide receiver was right here. Look at all this room. But what does he do? He holds on to it. He gets hit, and it turns into an interception. This is just one of the many plays, and I could go on and on and on, but this isn't a film breakdown on Peyton Thorne, which we probably need to make. Auburn winds up losing this game, and fans, they're not happy. Goes what being said, when your quarterback throws four interceptions and your team isn't looking too good on offense, fans start bringing up, well, dang, we should probably bench this guy and give the backup a chance. Well, yesterday in a press conference, Hugh Freeze obviously was asked about the quarterback position, and here's what he said in regards of considering a change. Quote unquote, it's really hard to not play a young man, whether it's Peyton or whoever, that consistently is the best performer in practice over and over and over again. However, you have to carry that over in games. That's a great point. Peyton Thorne, more than likely, I'm just taking Hugh Freeze's word for it. I don't know why he'd be lying about this and why he wouldn't want to put the best quarterback out there, has been the best quarterback in practice. That's not the problem. The problem is, like he states in this quote, it hasn't carried over in the games. But to be quite frank with all of you, I've had teammates just like this. I know all my current athletes or former athletes can relate to what I'm about to say next. There were guys on my basketball team, no lie, that I thought were the second coming of Michael Jordan in practice. I remember vividly two guys on the second team, B team, whatever you want to call them in practice, that would 
took us starters regularly. It was normal. I'm talking about they couldn't miss in practice. They're crossing over people left and right, going eight for nine, dropping like 20 points. I remember one time we were playing a game to seven, ones and twos against the backups, and one of the players I'm talking about, he beat us by himself. I say all that to say this. Whenever these two guys I played with got into the games, they were like Mr. Freeze. I would pass them the ball, and no joke, they looked like a deer in headlights. It had you questioning how they even made the team. Moral of the story is you got practice players and you got game players. Some people walking this earth have the it factor. When the lights turn bright, they turn brighter. Others out here, winky face, Peyton Thorne, they crumble like a cookie under the pressure. So I'm not going to say it doesn't put Hugh Freeze in a tough predicament, because it does. You got a guy balling out in practice. He looks like the better quarterback, but in the games, hasn't been performing. To me, although I'm not the head coach, I'm not Hugh Freeze, I could care less about what you do in practice. I don't care if you throw 10 interceptions per practice. If you go out here and you can play good during the games, that's who I'm rolling with because that's all that matters. When's the last time you heard anybody talk about how good some quarterback played on a Tuesday practice? Never! What matters is game day. And Peyton Thorne seems like a good guy, but he hasn't done nothing for Auburn in these two years. People tend to forget, even against Bama last year, he sucked. The only thing he did against Bama well was run the ball, that's it. The definition of insane is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. By trotting out Peyton Thorne on that field every Saturday, that's what you're doing. And here's my thing, right? Let the backup quarterback Hank Brown go out there. Worst case in scenario, he doesn't play good and you're back to square one. This is not the Big 12, it's not the ACC, it's not what the Pac-12 once was, and it's not even the Big 10. This is the SEC. You don't have time to just wait and hope and pray your quarterback's gonna be good. You have to act now and you have to act fast. Because if you continue to roll out this piss poor product like Hugh Freeze has, it's not gonna be pretty. I'm not saying you gotta go out here and win the next six games, but you gotta switch things up. He did say that Hank Brown, quote unquote, will definitely get his fair shots of reps in practice, but the mood I'm getting from all this is Peyton Thorne's still the guy. And I'm not sure you're going this anymore from this point forward. I think I said this last week as well before the game. Hugh Freeze is washed up. I want you to listen to what this goofy goober just said in his press conference. We aren't talented enough yet to play bad and win. We're not talented enough to play bad and win. My brother in Christ, are you kidding me? Like, what are we talking about, dude? You had five turnovers. Even Georgia, the best team in the country, is going to have a hard time overcoming that. This isn't a talent issue, guys. This is a huge freeze issue. He needs to take some accountability. Talking about we don't have the talent, dude. You went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alabama last year, and you should have won the game. To go on top of that, they gave Georgia a run for their money as well. I'll give these coaches credit. They're good at manipulating people, but they're not manipulating me. As an Alabama fan myself, this is one of the few times, if not one of the only times in my life, I've never feared an Auburn football team. For years, I've always feared them due to, well, number one, if you're playing in Jordan-Hare Stadium, who knows what can happen because there's witchcraft going on there. Secondly, I've always really respected their head coaches outside of Gene Chizik, but that year they had Cam Newton. But I tell you what, the one Auburn head coach that strike fear in my eyes was Gus Malzahn. That guy knew what he was doing, and he had the recipe to beating Alabama. I still can't believe Auburn fired him. The sad part about this is Auburn has the potential to be a good football team, but unfortunately, they have a washed-up head coach and terrible quarterback play. And that right there is two of the most important positions in all football, head coach and quarterback. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, Auburn fans, but it is going to be a rough, and I mean a rough year on the Plains. Good luck. That's all I'm going to say. I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, Darumene!